So hello everybody, this is Bhante Joe here and I'm just here back in Sri Lanka at a large rock in the Pilikutu forest and thought to record a short Dhamma, a short Awada for the internet. So I thought they could start with just a little meditation so you can lean forward a little bit and arch your spine and look about three feet in front and close our eyes. And can focus in on the breath. can know when it's coming in and know when it's going out. If we breathe in a long breath, can just know I'm breathing in a long breath. And if we breathe in a short breath, can just know I'm breathing in a short breath. And can focus attention around the general area of the nose. <clears throat> and when breathing in and out, can try to make the breath as comfortable as possible. Just asking oneself, what would be a really comfortable way to breathe right now? And then allowing the body to respond on its own. On the in-breath, can allow air to fill the lungs. <clears throat> On the out-breath, can let the body relax. And before we finish meditating, we can spread thoughts of goodwill, wishing may all beings all around everywhere be happy and at ease. May they put in place the causes necessary to be happy and at ease. And we can make the mind infinite and make it unbounded. And can open our eyes and do a shorter water. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. 
พุทธังสารนังกัจจามิตัมมังสารนังกัจจามิสังกังสารนังกัจจามิดุติยัมปิพุทธังสารนังกัจจามิดุติยัมปิตัมมังสารนังกัจจามิดุติยัมปิสังกังสารนังกัจจามิทัติยัมปิพุทธังสารนังกัจจามิทัติยัมปิตัมมังสารนังกัจจามิทัติยัมปิสังกังสารนังกัจจามิสวัสดีครับทุกท่านทุกท่าน n ุกท่านทุกท่านทุกท่านทุกท่านทุกท่านทุกท่านทุกท่านทุกท่านทุกท่านทุกท่านทุกท่านทุกท่าน So I've just recently uh, returned to Sri Lanka just a couple days ago after a very lovely trip in Canada, and um, it was interesting. Kind of uh, go back and you meet all these people that you haven't seen before, and people seem to be doing quite well, basically. And uh, you know, there's there's kind of uh, meetings, and you meet people you like, and you know, there's uh, often laughter, kind of, uh, and there's a type of happiness that comes from that. So when we think about what it is that makes a person happy, you know, it's usually this kind of uh, very um, ebullient, like uh, people smiling very widely with their teeth showing, and um, you know, and uh, uh, people kind of getting together and having like a party, and <laughs> and there's all this kind of very wild laughter. That's seen as having a really good time. That's seen as what it means to be happy. So when people think about what it means to be happy, usually they're thinking about this: like somebody who's uh, always in this mood where they're super upbeat and they're, you know, ready to laugh. They're always laughing, you know, always uh, uh, on this kind of, uh, uh, you know, upswing, <laughs> like this. <laughs> so it's interesting in that in the Buddha's definitions of happiness, there's these different ways that one can, you might say, be happy. There's different levels of disturbance to happiness, and indeed, this kind of happiness that one gets um, from associating with people that one likes, uh, from you know telling jokes and having a good time, this is a type of happiness. That's a type of pleasure that one gets in the world. So, when a person comes to practice Buddhism, it's uh, its principal quality, the principal quality that helps. And actually, making one happy and learning to be happy is this quality of wisdom, this quality of learning to examine things. So one can learn to examine, in the midst of this type of happiness, what are its qualities. Now, when a, one is outwardly engaged with people, one is kind of laughing, very ebullient. Then it has different qualities to it. One of them is that it depends on these other people. You know, one doesn't usually smile and have a really good time around one's enemies, <laughs> unless. Unless it's one of those kind of uh, you know Doctor Evil moments where you know they're they're having like this evil maniacal laugh because they've outwitted their enemy. And it's kind of you know, that's not really all that fun. But it usually depends on there being people one likes. It often depends as well on this contrast. Like it's more likely that one will be ebullient and happy when there's been a period where one has not seen when one's been deprived of a person that one likes. If one sees them all the time, then that Likelihood is much less that this kind of very ebullient feeling will come up, and the third quality to it, in addition to the contrast, in addition to the one liking the people one's around, is that it has this quality of kind of distraction to it. It's kind of one is lost in this overwhelming feeling of uh, you know like a joke where one ah one is lost in the joke. It's kind of there's this there's this aspect to it where one is kind of lost and one's not usually there necessarily a hundred percent in the present moment. It's uh, it's more like one is gone for a little bit, just kind of swept away by this feeling. So this is a certain type of happiness to it. There is this type of happiness to it. But this happiness also has these disadvantages, in that the because it's something that's dependent on other people. If one doesn't, if one's relationships with these other people are threatened, if one doesn't see them, if one is around enemies instead of friends, then this happiness gets very shaky. 
Another aspect of it is that because it's uh, it's something that uh, is based on this kind of forgetfulness, or based on yeah, based on this kind of like being swept away. It's it also has this aspect where one isn't aware usually of what's happening when one is kind of uh, engaging in this type of happiness, and one doesn't necessarily get to see it. It kind of can also block one's ability to see the patterns behind what it, it truly is that makes one happy or unhappy, this kind of happiness of entertainment, this happiness of flowing out, this happiness of, um, uh, of, uh, of, dis of being partially distracted from whatever the troubles that one might have are. So this is another disadvantage of it. A third disadvantage is that it depends on these kind of opposites, actually. If one is around people that one likes all the time, then this kind of ebullient thing goes away. One just gets used to them. And one hears the same joke all the time. It's kind of, <laughs> it's not that funny, right? Um, and uh, so it depends on this aspect of contrast. It always has to be this ever-seeking of fresh delight, something external and ever-seeking to it. It's kind of, so it's very threatened. It's a very shaky type of happiness. And there's an interesting aspect to this type of happiness too, in that one often find because there's this contrast to it, sometimes it can leave one drained when one engages in it a lot and in a connection that isn't always easy to see. So it's interesting that um, as a young man, you know, these, all these people who are class clowns or, you know, people who like to tell jokes and, you know, they seem like they're always upbeat, always happy. But you find out about their, their personal life, sometimes you find out these, it seems that there can actually be a higher frequency of depression in people who are always doing this kind of like very, uh, like in outwardly engaged in all these kind of uh, jokes or like comics, for example, or actors sometimes not always of course but more frequently than one would expect they can suffer badly from depression so part of this link is this part of this is this kind of link you know, this this happiness depends on its opposite and kind of and so engaging a lot in this distraction engaging a lot in this type of happiness can wear one out a bit can dull one's senses and make one uh, agitated and kind of dull one's senses to the extent that um, the normal things in life, one isn't able to get as much from them. There's also this kind of mysterious connection between this happiness and this depression. So these are some disadvantages. Now, one of the things that one doesn't usually think of when one thinks of happy people is when one sees people sitting quietly, <laughs> like in a room. You see somebody who's like a little bit straight-faced or whatever it might be. Say, oh, this guy is unhappy and he doesn't look happy. But there's types of happiness that one can cultivate when one becomes less agitated, when one becomes more inwardly focused. And these types of happiness depend more on one's ability to concentrate the mind, more on one's ability to focus on the present moment and meditation rather than externally things that we like on external opposites, all these various things. So one can learn to observe these things. This, this faculty of wisdom is important. One observes what one gets from this outward type of happiness. One observes what one gets from this inward type of happiness. And one observes the qualities between them, differences in the qualities between them. This inward type is less dependent on opposites. It still depends on opposites to a certain extent. But it doesn't have this quality of relying necessarily on outward things. And one can get it just by learning to calm the mind. It's not necessarily so ebullient, it's a happiness that comes from calm. One's mind becomes more calm, more still. And it's also not something that's a happiness of forgetting. And kind of one becomes more focused when, rather than kind of blotting out, one is more present during these types of, uh, during the times when one uh, can cultivate this type of happiness. So this type of happiness is seen as superior in the Buddha's teaching, superior to the other one. But to recognize this, one has to pay close attention. Now the benefit of paying close attention in this way is that if one does pay close attention to the differences in these types of happiness, then one can actually start to learn to make choices towards happinesses that are more true and can give up a lesser type of happiness for a happiness that's greater. Now this doesn't mean necessarily that one has to like cut off all one's, you know, associations and, you know, never talk and then, you know, one will never smile or laugh again. Actually, the uh, the great teachers in Buddhism, they often have this like very good sense of humor. But what one sees is that their sense of humor, their doing of these things, is always in service to this higher purpose of finding this end to suffering. So it's not a swept away 
uh, indulgence in these things, a swept away indulgence in the feeling or a swept away indulgence of the happiness of association. It's, uh, it's always under the service of the Dhamma. So this is important because cultivating this more still type of happiness sometimes requires us to let go of the types of happiness that we used to have. It requires us to let go of the happiness of going to parties. You know, let more and more let go of the happiness of engaging in outward forms of entertainment. And these types of renunciation are very difficult to do unless one really sees the reasons why one wants to do them. So overarching all these things one can is this faculty of wisdom. One can learn to become a connoisseur of happiness. What is it that really makes me happy? And how can I see what it is and what are the qualities of this? When one recognizes these things, it becomes easier to make choices. Easier to make choices that will lead away from a lesser happiness towards a greater one. Lead away from choices that will lead to a short-term happiness towards a happiness that's more long-term. And it will lead us in a direction where we can try to search for the best happiness of all, which is a happiness that doesn't change. This all underlies with this faculty of wisdom, this faculty of seeing clearly the causes and effects seeing clearly what it is that causes us to be happy, what it is that causes us to suffer, so that we can become a connoisseur of happiness, a connoisseur of happiness for the sake of finding the highest goal. Okay, so I think that leave that for reflection, and wishing everybody all the blessings of Dhamma practice.